Hare Krishna. For those of you who have joined us late, we are celebrating Snan Yatra today in preparation for our 12th annual Jagannath Festival Rati Yatra. So, just because we're a little behind schedule, it won't take too much time. We'd just like to thank uh, His Grace Rupanuga Prabhu for joining us. Um, I won't take too much time to introduce him. Prabhu is very active across Canada, and uh, we're very fortunate that he joined us here today. So, Hare Krishna. One more. Sorry.
Brahma noticed that as soon as the crow fell in the water, it suddenly took a four-handed form, a Vishnu Duda form. And a plane came, airplane came, and took it back to Vakukalo. And Brahma was shocked, you know, what's going on? And suddenly Yamaraj appeared. Who's Yamaraj? God of death. God of death, okay, God of death. We'll go with that. And, uh, and uh, he was even more shocked than Brahma. And he started to complain to Brahma. And he said, what is this? You know, I'm supposed to be the person responsible for punishing people for sinful activities. Now, Crow, we know, has committed lots of sinful activities. So suddenly, he gets born in form because Vishnu Dita goes back to the spiritual world. Then what is my duty? What's my role anymore? So everybody's just going to go like that. Nobody's going to get punished for sinful reactions. Brahma said, I have no idea. I have no idea what this place is and why this is happening. So they started to meditate upon the Lord and Mother Lakshmi appeared. And she said, let me explain to you what is this place. This is, she said, this place is known as Sri Chetra. Sri Chetra. Chetra means land or area. And uh, she said, whoever lives here, Upon leaving their body, they go back home to the spiritual world. If a person even lies down just to sleep, they get the result of going around the earth seven times. If a person sings anything, it could be a mundane song, they get the benefit of singing all the Vedic hymns. And Brahma said, But mother, this is not making any sense. What is so important, what is so great about this place? And she said, this is the place where the Lord is residing for a long time. And I'm with him, obviously. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful form of the Lord. So Brahma said, you can see it. So Brahma goes into his darshan. And he's amazed how beautiful this uh, form of the Lord is. This deity is so beautiful. And so he says, can you tell me a little bit more about it? And she says, well, long, long time from now, you will help a king by the name of Indra And uh, and you'll know what to do at that time. Just help him install the deity he wants you to install. And then she disappeared. So Brahma said, okay, so they all went to their respective places. And then this story was being told by a lot of sages they were discussing. And Gemini Rishi, not Gemini, sorry, Gemini Rishi was the head of that group and was spreading all this thing. There were some people who were in that group and they started to travel and they were telling the story to other people also. Then some descendant of somebody, again as a group of mendicants, they were traveling and they came to this kingdom known as Avanti Nagar. The king's name was Indajuna. He was very pious, very religious king. You see, why these people to come and discuss Lord Krishna's pastimes and other Vedic pastimes, spiritual pastimes? So one of them mentioned uh, this name. Anybody remembers the name of Lord Dhirana before he became Dhirana? Neel Madhav. Neel exactly. Neel Madhav. And they describe that apparently there's this place called Nilachal. In that place Nilachal, there's a cave called Niladuri. In that cave Niladuri, there's a Beautiful blue deity of the Lord, Nirmala. And describe how beautiful it is. So King Nidham said, I want to see. I want to take darshan of this deity. And they said, Well, we have no idea. We have heard this story from generations, but we have no idea what this place is. So the king said, I want to find out. And he sent his soldiers different directions. And his prime minister said, You know what? You should also send my brother. His name is Vidyapati. Very, very intelligent, knows everything. He will find a space for you. So he's talking, you also go. So all the soldiers, Vidyapati, they all went different directions. Vidyapati went east, got to this place called Urisa. And uh, he started hearing the story about Nirmata, but nobody knew where it is. So he kept walking, kept going, finally got to this village, which seemed very peaceful. So he said, I'm going to stay here for a while and see what's going on. So he stayed there. After some time, the head of the um, the quiet shabbars, they came, and uh, he came and he said, uh, how can I help you? And he said, I'm just here wandering around. So he said, you know, you have come to my town, let me be my guest. 
and he invited me to come to his house. So he went to his house and uh, after you know, serving prasadam, he asked, how can I help you? And Japanese said, I've heard about this deity called Neil Mata. I will take a darshan. And uh, the, the head of the Ashwabhari, whose name was Vishwavasu, said, I'm sorry, that is not possible. It's very, uh, very confidential. Not only that, I have heard that a king will one day come and take the deity away. I live for a king, therefore I cannot show. So he was very disappointed, he said, okay, but he stayed for a while. And then different versions of the story, but one version says that the daughter of Vishwasuka fell in love with this person and asked to get married to him at the Vishwasuka. Then agreed, so he got married. After some time, the Japanese said his wife, you know, your father knows where this Neil Madhav deity is. So can you tell him to show? She said, of course. So she would talk to the father who said no. He kept on going for some time. Finally, he said yes. And he said to uh, Vidyapati, I'll take you there, but I'm going to blindfold you because I don't want you to be able to tell anybody who this deity is. She said, okay. So he blindfolded him. But his wife said, you know, tear his mustard seeds, put them in your pocket. And as you're being taken, just throw them a little bit all of the way because when the rainy season comes, then go and you see the whole bunch of plants of mustards. And then uh, you can find the way back. Okay. He went, got the darshan. Amazingly beautiful name on the darshan. Very, very happy. And then he put the plant for back and brought it back. And he went to the king. And he said, yes, I have seen. I have never seen anything more beautiful than that. This absolutely gorgeous lady, you can't see it. He said, yes, let's go. And we literally packed up and the whole kingdom left. They walked to this place. We got to this place. Beyond this, I don't know, but let's follow the trail of the monster priest. So they went to follow. They went to the cave. They went inside. They went to the altar. And guess what? There's no near mother. The God is gone. And then he was crying, saying, I come all the way here, my Lord, you can't do this to me. Please give me a darsha, others, I'm going to kill myself. And he said that there was a voice from the sky, Akashwani. He said, King, do not despair. This was my plan. I am here on this earth as Neil Madhav during the first 50 years of Brahma. It's just about to start his 51st year on his birthday, on Brahma's birth, 51st year. I'm going to appear in the form of a log in the ocean. And that log is going to have very special symbols of Shankar Chakra Gadanpar, which is mace, conch shell, disc, and lotus flower. You see that, bring that in, and carve that into my deities. And you'll have the same version as the mother. So he said, okay, shall we wait? After some time, he saw a log. Beautiful, big lord is carrying all these marks. So he was very happy. He said, Let's bring it in. They tried and tried and tried. There are thousands of soldiers, thousands of elements trying to pull the log in. They could not do that. So people would say, Oh, now what will you do? And again, another voice in the sky said, You get Vishwasu, the head of the Shabris, his daughter, and her husband, Vidyapati. If the three of them could pull the log, we'll be able to do that, put them on a cart. Take a few baths and find a carpenter to carve it. So they did that rather easily, brought a log to the palace, and they said, Okay, let's find a carpenter. Many came, nobody could carve anything. And as soon as they put the chisel on the log, it will break. Chisel will break. Finally, an old man came, said, I will do it. That man was Vishwakarma, I got in one version, and another version is Krishna himself came as carpenter. Either way, it doesn't matter. And the, the carpenter said, I'll carve it, but one condition, give me 21 days. Do not give me, uh, sorry, don't, do not disturb me in those 21 days. I don't want any water, I don't want any food. Just leave me alone, keep the door locked. And he said, okay. 15 days went by, suddenly no sound of chisel or the hammer, nothing. And the king's wife, Queen Gundicha was her name. 
should have been worried. I mean, you know, women are lot more soft-hearted than men are. So King was fine. Oh, don't worry, he'll be fine. I said, no, no, old man, not even in three days, I don't want him to die. So there was this argument going on, and finally the king said, okay, I'll do what you want to do. He opened the door. As soon as he opened the door, the carpenter turned around and said, I told you not to come here, and disappeared. And the king saw the deities, look like I'm a finished deity still. But we all know the story, the end of the story. That was the, the appearance of Lord Jagannath and Baldev and Subhadra as we know them today, as we saw them today. So I want to go back to two points. One is the day the king saw the log in the ocean is also known as Islam Yatra. It's also known as the appearance day of Lord Jagannath. So today we are actually celebrating the appearance day of Lord Jagannath. It's birthday day. I don't know how many of you do that. So that's, that's, yeah. Happy birthday, Lord Jagannath, my brother, please. And the king was saying, but I'm so sorry I interrupted the calling of the deities. Now we don't have full deities. He's crying and crying and crying. And the queen was feeling even worse. She kept saying to her husband, I'm so sorry I made you do this. As a result, now you have incomplete deities. So then the happy wanderer, the sage came. Who's the happy wanderer sage? Narada Muni. He showed up. He always showed up at the right time of that place. He said, do not worry. There's a story behind this also. And the story he told was that long time ago, when Krishna was living in Dwarka, along with 60,108 wives, he would be all constantly remembering Radharani, Gopis, other friends of Vrindavan, Vishwada, Nanda Maharaj. And the queens could not understand why, when they love him so much, they serve him so much, why is he always remembering Vrindavan? Uh, so once they had an occasion, they, they saw Mother Lohini. And they said to Mother Lohini, everyone knows Lohini, who is she? Balaram. Balaram. Balaram's mother, yeah, exactly. She said, uh, they said, you were there when Krishna was having his pastimes. So can you please tell us about his pastimes and why is he so attracted and attached to his friends and relatives in the town? So she said, okay, I will tell you, but this is very confidential. So I want a closed room, I don't want anybody else. And this Subhadra is a sister. She's a sister, she's not allowed to hear those kind of pastimes. So we want her out. So they threw Subhadra out. And all the other 16,108 wives and Mother Lohini sat down to tell the story. Now you know Subhadra is very curious, right? So she said, okay, I'm not in the room, but I'm outside the room, but I'm going to put my ears against the room and hear what she said. And she was listening. Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna were at the office. What's the name of the office? Anybody knows? No, no, the office. Dwarka they were living in. Sudharma. <laughs> That was the name of the office where they lived, uh, the work. So there, they, heard, they knew right away that our past lives are being discussed. So they left the office. Okay, today we're going to work from home. And they came all the way to, to their palace. And they saw that at the door, but they're sitting here against the door. And they said, what's going on? Sit down, listen, listen, don't disturb. So they said, the same thing. An amazing transformation happened as they were listening. They felt so much ecstasy, the hand went inside their body. The legs went inside their body. The eyes went so wide, like a child in amazement, the eyes were so wide, how can this be? But they were so happy listening, they had this ear to ear smile. As they were listening to the story, they formed stayed in that way. And then once again, our happy wanderer says, showed up. Now, he saw this form. He offered his obeisances and expressed amazement at the form of seeing. And by then, they had come back to the original form, Krishna Bhagavan Sukhata. And they said, Dada you know me kind of amazed. Uh, anything happened? Did you see anything? And Dada says, Prabhu, you know what I saw. So I said, oh, really? Was something wonderful? Prabhu, you know, why are you taking me? They said, okay, fine. What do you want? 
God will say, my dear Lordships, I just want one benediction from you. The benediction is that the form I have seen today, please make it visible to everybody as a believer. For ever and ever. And I said, okay, you are happy for it, so be it. The castle. So now to explain to you in the gym, I come back to the story. That is the form the Lord wanted to manifest to everybody, and that is why this whole past time was gone. So this is why now we have permanent vision after after God, the Lordship of Krishna Bhagavana Swadra, the form that you're seeing today, the whole background of that story is done. So the one one reason why Snanya is the first day in the Dinas saw the Lord in the ocean. Now he's got his deities. He says, how can deities have been stopped? So Narada just said, meditate about Lord Brahma. He had been told a long time ago to help you with this deity. So then he meditated upon him. Lord Brahma appeared. Yes, I remember the whole thing. Perform that yes. Perform one thousand years. Not one, not two. So, how much time I have? Can you help me with that? How much time? Can you ask them how much time I have? Over five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Great. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, he performed 999 years. And I said, okay, stop. Before the thousand one, you have to do something else. You'll find a deity of Lord Vishnadeva. As here, find it, build a temple for him. So he went around, found the deity, and that was Ugri Nasiridev deity from Satya. He made a temple for them, and the worship started. That temple, by the way, is still there. Anybody been there? It's behind the Gunditsha temple, but there are two Nasiridev deities. So I've seen that one behind, that's the Yes. So in the front, you have what's now Shanta Nasiridev, very peaceful. Really. But if you're really lucky and nice to the Pudaris, they take you inside and they show the deity behind the deity. That is open as a white in color, really ferocious looking. I used to get scared seeing that. But amazing deity. I mean, next time you go to Hiranath Puri, if you go from Mangal Arti to this temple, it's behind Buddhist temple, and request the Pudari in the Vedanta you should be seen. Beautiful deity. Anyway, so that deity was installed by anything. And then the Vigya started again. And then when the Vigya finished, the bathing ceremony started. That's the Snanyata second time. So again, they're celebrating that occasion also. But for the first time, before the installation of these deities of Dr. Ganath Pradesh Bhadra, uh, in Dibna had the bathing ceremony. And it's mentioned in the scriptures that everybody from the whole universe, including the demigods, of course, Brahma and everybody else came, they performed the ceremony. And we went on and millions of years went by the whole long story. Finally, we have to correct temple of the where this ceremony is done also. Where they take, initially they used to take Lord Dhananath uh, by the, to the ocean itself. They don't do that anymore. Now what they do is they snan bathing within the campus of the temple. They take out the uh, deities, the three deities, which are very, very heavy. Anybody who's seen the Dhananath Puri Ratchatra, how the deities are taken out, they, they can realize how heavy they are. And how different is the place they carry in space. It's not really where they are bathed with, um, with, with water from a special well known as Snan Kuami's well. Snan is bathing. Very special uh, well from that. Very special people who are assigned only this duty for the whole year. So the entire year they are doing nothing. But it's one day they are employed to bring the water. And for that one day of work they create the whole year. And many, many people like that who have only one duty, but they get paid for the whole year. Like, for example, making the ropes to put the rat, making the ropes to carry the rats to the, to the rat, and so on and so forth. Uh, some have duty only to light the fire for the, uh, for the ovens in the kitchen. Some have duty to bring the water from the well, at least a pond, to the kitchen, so on and so forth. Only one duty, but they get paid for the whole year. That's an amazing thing. What, yeah. Anyway, so. That, that bathing is done. Now what happens is, as you know, the wood deities, me, and this color, it runs away. As the water has been put on. Because every day with the bathe, you bathe in the mirror, not the real. 
this one day they did thousands of parts of water so the color starts to run so what they do is they enclose the place and only those who are bathing lot are supposed to go in there nobody else goes they are supposed to bring any water any uh, food anything like that has to be outside and they give darshan once in a while but just in case people get you know, upset by seeing you know, uh, color running on the faces not looking very nice they give me a gajavesh you know what gaj is yeah. elephant so they give the form of an elephant so they cover the face whenever people do darshan so people see the gajavesh of the elephant form of the lord and then of course they finish the bathing and the, the coloring and all that they take them back and it's called anavasa for 15 days the lord is worshiped only by this particular caste who are the descendants of his was the shatrus the actual brahmana is not allowed to go in this for 15 days rest of the year they serve for 15 days they serve they, they serve the sabala and uh, and nobody is allowed to get darshan of the lord now just to give you the background there was a devotee who was a worshiper of lord ganesh he went to the king of orissa and said Ganesh is bigger than uh, uh, your Jagannath, so you should worship Ganesh. So there was some discussion, and the king said, "Okay, we we'll, we'll talk about it." So at night, the Lord came to the dream of the king and said, "Encourage this devotee to take my darshan tomorrow." So he said, "Okay." So he went to the devotee and said, "Please go and take darshan." And he was not very willing. He said, "No, no, I'm only worshiping Ganesh. I don't want to see anybody else." And he said, "No, please." Do that. So the devotee went. He saw the Lord, and what did he see? The Lord in the form of an elephant. And then he realized that the Lord is actually the same. Actually, everybody else is a form of the Lord. Then we get lost in the world. Anyway, I think my time is up. So once again, different reasons for celebration of Snan Yatra, and each Snan Yatra is also the Abhiras Day of Pachamama. So today we are celebrating two occasions: the Abhiras Day of the Lord. and the very ceremony of lord which causes him to pretend to be sick so he can another reason sorry for admission another reason is that he knows is going to go on rath yatra he knows his wife lakshmi is not going to be happy so he's going to spend 15 days exclusively with her to make her so happy that she will allow him to go for one day so that's a bribe he gives to his wife so that's another reason Okay, and then like I said, if I had an hour, I could do that more. But anyway, that's basically the background of Snan Yatra. So let's celebrate that today. And Archana Nath Ki Jai, Archana Nath Ki Jai, Archana Nath Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. 